gotta check you before you wreck yourself. Before we go into this morning's text, I want to share two amazing examples in the word of God to prepare you for this morning's message. Remember when Jesus left the grave, the Bible says he left his clothes laying on the ground. Uh -huh. But he took his time and folded the napkin. He folded and left the napkin in a very neat position. All right. Remember in the story of Lazarus when Jesus called Lazarus from the grave? The Bible says that when Lazarus came out of the grave, Jesus told him to take off your grave clothes. Right. Take off that stuff that reminds you of your negative yesterday. Take it off right. take and it off. leave it. Uh -huh. take it off. Yeah. Leave it. Jesus left his clothes in the grave. But he took the time to get to fold the napkin. And I often wonder why would he take the time to fold the napkin? So I began to, to research Jewish customs. And this is what I discovered in a Jewish family, Deacon Oliver, that when the head of the house, when he's at the dinner table and he finished his meal, if he folds the napkin and leaves it in a fold position, that means he's coming back. He's not finished yet. But if he just discards the napkin, that means it's done. But if he folds it and leaves it, it means he's coming back. When Jesus folded the napkin, he was ready. You and I know it's not finished. But I'm coming back. But, but the reason I'm going to leave the clothes man around because when I come back, I'm coming back for a church without spot or anything. I'm not coming back for a church that's mad, sad. I'm not coming for a depressed church. So I need you to take off your great clothes. But when you come out, when you come out this season, when the favor of God meets you this season, when you come out this season, when the favor of God turns it around in your favor this season, you won't look like what you went through. This season, you won't wear the great clothes of negativity. This season, you won't wear a broke man's clothes. This season, you won't be mad in your mind. This season, everything that reminds you of where you've been, I need you to let it go and lose it. I need you to release it at this altar because he folds the napkin. Let you know, I'm coming back, but I can't come back until you get your mind right. I can't come back until you get your money right. I can't come back until you get your family right. I can't come back until you're ready to receive me. So I challenge you right now, whatever you're holding on to, whatever reminds you of your past, I promise you right now, if you let it go, if you let it go and release it right now, God says, I'm going to come back and bless you. And the favor of the Lord is ready to turn it around in your favor. Oh, I dare you to be like Pastor Sergeant and holler back at the preacher. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, I receive it. My money is dead no more. My marriage is dead no on, more. Man. My health is dead no more. My family is dead. I receive it. I leave it. And I'm preparing myself for the second coming. and give God some praise for my actors as they come to Carter family. For those who may not be familiar with the word of God, I'm going to make it so clear. If you've never been in church, you can still get the blessing. Because I've made my mind up. If I'm going to be the priest of the community, there will be some people that will come out of broken places. There will be some unchurched, unloved people that will show up here. So I have a responsibility, not just to prove to you that I know the Bible, but to prove to you that I love you. So we'll make it so crystal clear, so simplistic, <laughs> that you'll be able to receive it. Oh, Turn toward them. 
On the Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. We're reading Luke chapter 13, verse number 10. On the Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman who was there had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you have been set free. And he touched her. And she stood up straight. And praise God for her deliverance. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah, Lord. You, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. She praised him for her deliverance. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. No longer was she stuck in a bent yes, over position. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She praised God yes, Lord. for her deliverance. Yes, I tell you right now, take about three seconds to give God praise for your deliverance. Let's have a conversation. The favor of God is getting ready to turn it around in your favor. I want you to notice something. This is woman, this woman, this woman, this woman, this woman, this woman, and this woman, man, this, this woman had major issues in her life. She had a lot of stuff going on. She had major struggles, and she had been struggling for a long time. The Bible says 18 years. That's a long time. This woman had been struggling and bent over in a negative position for a long time. There's someone here today, the sound of my voice. You've been going through something for a long time. You've been dealing with the same issue, the same predicament, the same madness, the same dysfunction, the same generational curse that hunted your mama's mama still dogging you today. But I'm coming to tell you that you shall be set free. On, this generational come. curse shall be broken to death. This woman had struggles. This woman had major issues. This woman had so much going on in her life. She could have been in Keith Sweat's video in 1987. Something, something just ain't right. Yeah. You better yet this woman, yet this woman, in spite of everything she had going on in her life, in spite of all her issues, her condition and situation, notice she was in the church. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Come on, man. You didn't get what I said. In spite of everything that was going on in her life, she made her way to the church. I confused sometimes that when you call me and say, Pastor, I won't be in church. I got too much going on in my life. My body is sick. My marriage is messed up. And my children are acting up. But well, I come to command to the atmosphere. When you're going through something, when something, something just ain't right, that's that time to run from the church. That's time to run to the Greenhouse International Church, a place where you get a word to empower you to reach your full potential. All she was going through. Yeah. My, my, my. Why would I stay home today? Her girlfriend would have understood. Yes. If she would have stayed home. Yeah. You better run. Her family would have justified the fact that, well, well, baby, go on, stay home and get you some rest. No, you've been resting too long. Come on, man of God. You've been bent over 18 years. Come on, man of God. Don't you realize by now you won't get better by whining, complaining, and no showing? There's an answer in the word of God and the Bible that this bit over crippled woman found her way. You're not really understanding what I'm saying. She was bent over. She was crippled. She was in a bad way. Yet somehow she found the strength to work her way to the church. Some Sunday mornings, when I'm turning to the campus, I see little old women walking across the street yes. with canes yes. and walkers yes. to get to the Word. Yes. Yet I got grown 30 and 40 year old women who husband didn't come home last night and won't come to church because they going through something. When you go understand that what you're going through, you can't solve it in your bed of pity. You can't solve it by feeling sorry for yourself. If something, something ain't right, you need a word from the Lord. This woman blessed me. Yeah, yeah, she blessed me too. She made her mind up. Yeah, it's messed up. Yeah, it's messed up. But it won't stop me. Because I realize that I can't get better staying here. Yeah, this messed up. Woo! You got to sit here. 
I need something better. Yeah, 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 Lord. yeah. I walked in this morning and was greeted by a young man. He said, Pastor, this young man short this morning early. And he said, Pastor, I just got out. And I made my mind up. I got to do something different. Yeah. I don't 
need my kids looking to Hollywood for a role model. I don't need my kids even look at Empire to find a real dynasty. I need my people to be able to look at the man in the church and say, that's who I want to be like. Not like Mike them. I want to be like Deacon them. I want to be like preaching them. I want to be like a man that I've seen take care of his family. I need a man that I've seen. If I got to cut grass and watch wonders, I'll do whatever it takes to take care of my family. I need some role models in God's house. A generation crippled by an education system more concerned with standardized testing scores and budgets than the total welfare of our children and their futures. A culture crippled, crippled by poor money management yeah, 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 that's crippled. and poor work ethics. Yeah, come on here. Crippled by the fact that I'll take my hard-earned money and go buy a pair of Jordans right. and my lights off. Jesus, that's a crippled world. When I leave my crib, you can say, look at my kids. But my children can't kick it because they can't read. Yeah, they can't read. Crippled. That's crippled. Crippled by a generation that will fill their bodies with junk and then want to pray for deliverance. You deliver from that food you're eating. Crippled. My God. Yeah, you're going to put it in your body. Come on, man of God. That's crippled. <laughs> A culture crippled by defeated minds and selfish motives, thinking only about yourself. Crippled. A church community crippled by being divided and beaten against one another instead of uniting to beat the real enemy. Crippled. Stop hating on other folks. You're crippling yourself when you're more concerned about what somebody else is wearing and driving and what they're doing. You take care of your business. I promise you, God will bless you right where you are. Stop looking over somebody else's backyard. You don't know what they're going through to keep their grass that green. And, and I discovered something. The man came by my house the other day from True Love. He said, I can paint your grass green. You chasing stuff is not even real. You mad in your relationship that somebody on Facebook and Instagram look like they got it going on. That ain't real. You preach this word. Jesus, that's a cripple society. A country digging cripple by law. A country cripple by law protecting the rich when they are guilty but killing the poor before they can prove their innocence. Come on, man of God. A country crippled, that's crippled. by politicians that's still mad for the black man living in the White House. Crippled. Yeah, that's crippled. The body of this woman was crippled. Yeah, 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 Lord. You see, now we're crippled too. My God. And she was crippled by a spirit. So I say a spirit. A spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a constant tug of war. Jesus. Battling inside of all of us. Yes. Yes. The spirit of fear. Yes. The spirit of doubt. Yes. The spirit of jealousy. Uh -huh. The spirit of envy. Yes. Wants to overcome you. Yes. And the spirit of drugs and the spirit of addictions are teaming up with the other negative spirit? spirits trying to defeat you. Come on, church, pray with but God did not give us the spirit of fear. Come on, and God calls us victorious overcomers. So I don't care what spirit is trying to take you out. Yeah. You got to claim the spirit of the victorious overcomer. Yeah. My God, this morning. Jesus. Today you got to make your mind up. Come on. You got to rise. You got to decide which spirit yeah. 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 will you feed the most. Come on, man of God. Because the spirit you feed the most That's the will be the spirit that will dominate. Yeah. The spirit you feed the most will be the spirit that will respond in the crunch. See, yes. it's easy to feel good on a Sunday morning in the greenhouse where everything grows and everything is positive and everything. But can you keep the good attitude? Can you keep your mind right when you at your job and all hell is breaking? Can you keep your thoughts together when everything around you is chaotic? And can you keep yourself together when everything is falling apart? You got to have enough word. But the only thing I feed is my flesh. I won't have a word when I get in trouble. My God, my God. Come on, man of God. Press this. Warning, alert. You will get in trouble. Yeah, stuff happens. Something will happen that will disturb and interrupt your normal life. Yes, it 
Something spontaneous would just happen. You, you'd be on, on, on a cruise ship and a storm would just break out. You'll be living in peaceful times and a war will just be declared. You will wake up and everything is good to go to bed and find out you're under attack. Come on, Pastor. My God. There's a spirit that wants to cripple me. It wants to cripple me. Come on, man of God. And get this a negative attitude. Amen. Is an entryway to a crippling spirit. To being crippled. Check, yeah. Check your attitude. Yeah. 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 You're preaching, Pastor. Jeff. And not just attitude of having an attitude, yeah. but check your attitude in the way you yeah. think about yourself yeah. and others. Because yeah. 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 the way you treat others is the way you think of God. You can't love me and diss my wife and children. So, in other words, you can't love God and then me being God's child, you diss me. If you diss me, you're dissing my father at the same time. How's your attitude? Is your attitude so jacked up you invite a crippling spirit in your life? That's why you can't get along on your job. That's why you can't get along in your marriage. That's why you can't get along at the family union. That's why everywhere you go, you misunderstood. You got a jacked up attitude. And your jacked up attitude has now been hijacked by a crippling spirit. Come out and make it plain. It's everybody else, but it's you. Come on. Oh, but I'm declaring today the only spirit that will overcome you is a winning spirit. Now you got to receive it in the name of Jesus. The crowd with me. I receive it. The Bible says for 18 years. That's a long time. For 18 years she was struggling with this issue. Keith, she was bent over for 18 years. But I look at it a little differently than most. The Bible says for 18 years, she was bent over, but the Bible does not say from birth she was bent over. So, at some point in time, there was a period in her life where she was doing well. At some point in time, there was a season in her life where everything was going according to plan. But along the thing called life, something happened that caused her to be bent over. But I'm declaring and I'm releasing enough faith in this house that you are getting ready to be renewed and restored. You get ready to come out in mint condition. In other words, you're going to return back to the way you were before you got bent over. In other words, before that thing died on you, before that thing hurt you, before that thing crushed you, before that negative experience, you're going to get your joy back. You're going to get your hope back. You're going to get your peace back. You're going to get your mind back. Before you first hit the dream, before you first got the addiction, before you first went through the breakthrough, before you first went through the nightmare, before you had the nervous breakdown, before you went to jail, before you went to hell, before you went through what you went through, the day have enough faith in here that the power of God and the favor of God is going to restore you and renew you and you're going to get back to where you were. For a matter of fact, I'm bold to the crap. Not only will you get back where you were, you'll be better than you've ever been before. You will return to your current state. You'll return to condition greater than you've ever experienced in your life. The question is, can you see yourself better? Yes, I can. I can holler all day long, you better. But can you see yourself better? Do you understand it? Get your neighbors out here and say, can you can see you yourself better? Yes. See, I discovered yes. while I'm waiting on the favor of God yes. to turn around in my favor, yes. I discovered sometimes I got to learn how to encourage myself. Yes. If I ain't got nobody high five, I got to high five myself. If I don't have a dance partner, I got to dance all by myself. If I don't have nobody touch and agree with me, I'll hit myself out the head, high five myself, and say, yeah, Eddie and Andre, we touch and agree today in the name of Jesus. Stop waiting on somebody to be free you. Stop waiting on somebody to encourage you. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself to sometimes folks will understand what you're going through. Sometimes folks will understand why you're trying to go where you're going. Some folks are selling right here. They don't understand why you still grinding. Why you still believing. Why you still trusting God. After all you've been through, won't you be satisfied with where you are? But I know God.
So I can't stop. Yeah. Don't stop. Come back at this. Yeah, that's rich, brother. The Bible says about 18 years says she was bent over and could not straighten up. She was bent over. And uh yeah, could not straighten up. In this position, you have no vision. My people perish for lack of vision. In this position, you have no vision. In this position, not only you have no vision, but you have no power. In this position, you're at the mercy of everyone who's lording over you. At this position, you're nothing but an indigenous servant. At this position, at the very best, you can do is follow my directions and instructions. That's why you're so frustrated. If somebody's trying to take you somewhere, you know you don't belong. But if you've been over, you got to trust somebody else to guide you. Because you don't have any vision nor any power. So when you've been over, you don't have any power. The enemy can push you over. And because you don't have power, you fall over and you keep falling. That's why you keep falling for the same joker. <laughs> you and your back marriage and every relationship look like the last relationship because you've been walking around bent over. And Come on. I almost went x ray but when you're bent over, that's a dysfunctional position. You have no vision. So I can take you wherever I want to take you. And I can do to you whatever I want to do to you. But I thank God today that you're no longer bent over. I thank God that he's restoring your vision. And he's giving you back your power. Because the Bible says when Jesus saw the woman and the woman in a negative position, he said, get up. The devil wants you to stay bent over so he can do to you what he want to do to you. But thank God today you're no longer bent over. You're straightened up. Because when you straighten up, you can stand up. When you straighten up, you can look up. When you straighten up, you can speak up. When you straighten up, you can move up. The problem is you're satisfied with being bent over. You can play the victim. Preach! Speak that word, man. They doing me wrong. Come on, Preach. Yeah, come on. They taking advantage of me. Preach! Well, straighten up. Yeah, straighten up then. Come on, man up. See, every desire is. For you to stay bent over. Uh huh. So it can do you. Uh huh. <laughs> but this, this, this really, if I conclude, this really messed me up. When the woman straightened up, what was her location? She was where? In the church. In the church, in the synagogue. Yeah. I would have thought a praise party would have broke out. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said that when she straightened up, people got mad. Yeah. It amazes me. How people glad when you bent over. It amazes how people want to see you struggle. It and I get this, she wasn't in the club, she wasn't in the hole in the wall, she wasn't on the street corner, she, she wasn't anywhere out, she was in the church. And the people in the church, the hypocrites in the church, got mad when this woman got straightened up. When this woman got herself together, the people did not celebrate, they started hating on her. The Bible is, they got indignant, they were mad. They were angry because somebody got themselves together. I declare right now, you won't let anybody stop you from getting yourself together. I'm declaring right now that this season, the favor of God is going to turn it in your favor. You're going to straighten up. And for a matter of fact, I'm declaring right now, the favor of God is going to silence all your opponents. The favor of God is going to silence all your enemies. The favor of God is going to silence all your haters and the real church the true believer won't hate on you but will celebrate you for a matter of fact I tell you right now to celebrate God not for your own success celebrate God for somebody else celebrate God for somebody else's victory celebrate God for somebody else's victory celebrate God for somebody else's victory
ago. Marvin Sapp went platinum. But this song I never would have made it. Marvin said I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better. After all the hell I went through. Life thought it was gonna break me. Life thought I was gonna be defeated. Life thought I was gonna walk around with a half a mind. But Marvin said, but I'm glad.